Hello guys, Ryan here from The London Craftsman. Thanks again for watching and today's video is all about designing a wardrobe and making a cutting list. So let's go ahead and do it. Right, so to start the job, I've got myself a calculator, a mouse Tipex pen and a biro. This is what I prefer. So let's just run over a few of the specifications. We've got a wall-to-wall -wall site size of two meters, 2000 millimeters. And we've got floor to ceiling, so let's write wall to wall. We've got floor to ceiling of two 400 floor to ceiling. We're gonna have fixed shelves. At the bottom, and we're gonna have hanging rails at the top. Um, what else do we need to know? Our carcass is going to be 600 deep. Um, flat doors. Um, and that is it. So we've got those details. Now, first things first is we need to draw in a rectangle. And this is representing the actual opening itself, the room. So we've got wall to wall, floor to ceiling, looking at it front view. So let's go ahead and mark in those measurements. So the width wall to wall is two meters, wall to wall. And we've got floor to ceiling, floor to ceiling of 2400. Okay, so we need to put a wardrobe within that space, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw another rectangle within that. There we go, a little bit wonky, but never mind. you can still read it. All right, so now we need to figure out voids. So on the sides, I always leave 40 mil, 40, 40, and top and bottom, I leave 50 and 50. If you've got carpet to cut away, um, allow another 20 mil. I'm allowing, I'm just taking into account that this is going directly to the subfloor floorboards and there's no carpet. Like I said, just allow another 20 mil if you've got to cut back your carpet. Um, we've also got skirtings in here, haven't we? Most rooms have skirting boards. They're usually between 20 and 25 mil. So the reason I go for 40 mil trims is firstly, so I don't have to take off any skirtings and the wardrobe fits within that space. Um, if you've got out of level walls, that takes into account the out of level walls. And we don't want to put a trim in too small, otherwise when we go to fix it, it'll probably split that trim in half. If you've got coving in the top corners of your rooms, allow for that. But I haven't, so I'm just allowing 50 mil at the top. All right, so now we've got our overall site size, wall to wall, two meters. You can, they can then go, okay, what's our overall carcass size? So we go two meters minus 40 and 40, which is 19, 20. 19, 20, make total. Okay, and then we've got the make height of the carcass, which is there to there. It's 2.4 minus 50 and 50 is 2, 300 make, make height. Right, obviously we can't have a wardrobe that big without any support. So what I'm gonna do is divide this space up into two and give myself two double carcasses. So find the halfway line roughly and square that line down. Um, on this particular wardrobe, I'm gonna have my sides run all the way through. So let's go ahead and draw those sides in. That's the side and that's the side. So that's one carcass and then that's the side. And that's the side. If we've got divisions, then what we would probably do is have the tops running all the way through, not in between, so all the uprights are the same length. But as we don't have any divisions, I'm gonna have my sides running through. There we go. So now we've got two carcasses. Now we need to know the width of these carcasses We've got an overall make total of 1920. All we need to do is divide that by two, don't we? 1920 divided by 2, 
divided by 2 equals 960. Let's go ahead and write that in. 960. 960. So we also need to know the width as well of the tops and bottoms and all the shelves that go inside. So we need to know the inside space from that point to that point. So that would be 960 minus whatever these sides are. So anything I make with carcasses is 99% of the time 18 mil. So let's write 18. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Unless they're shelves that span over 600 mil, um, I'd use 18. If they span over 600 mil, then I'll make them out of 25 mil India. Okay, so we've got 960 minus 36, which is 18 and 18, equals 924. So we know inside space, I'm going to write ints, that's what I always do, ints, inside to inside of the carcass is 924. That's helpful for when we write down our cutting list, we know the length of the top and bottoms, and we're going to know the length of these fixed shelves too. Obviously, this is obviously the same. Let's go ahead and draw that on that side. Nine, two, four. So, like I said, if um, hanging rails at top. So, we're just going to draw crudely a hanging rail at the top. And just so you know, I always use a 25mm hanging rail, not 19mm. There we go, one there. Let's draw that in. 25mm. And the gap I leave between the carcass top and the hanging rail is always 60mm. That's my preference. Like I said, everyone is different. Right, so now we've got the width of the carcass, we've got the width for the inside. Remember, we can determine the size of these hanging rail lengths by the inside. We just take off 2mm off the um, hanging rail for it to fit. So the hanging rail would be 922. But now we've got all these details here. We need to work out where these shelves are going to go. So my preference is to leave 1 meter from the top of the hanging rail to the start of a shelf, a fixed shelf or an adjustable shelf. 1 meter. That is mid, mid range. 950 would be tight. I would probably say go to 1100 if you want it to be nice and luxurious in there with no um, clothes touching anywhere. But ultimately one meter should do the trick. As this carcass is, this shelf is spanning more than 600. We've got 924. I'm gonna make this shelf 25 more thick. Okay, so let's draw that in on this side too. 25. Might as well draw it right in here as well. One meter. All right, so now we've done all of this, all we need to do is work out how many shelves we're going to get into this space. But before we know that, we need to work out the space from here to here, what we've got left over after all of this. So that's pretty easy. We get the overall make height of the carcass, two, three hundred minus 18, minus 60, minus from that point to that point, which is a meter, equals 1222. So we've got 1222 from there to there, 1222. Let's go ahead and draw that on this side as well, 1222. Right, so, my thoughts is going to be, it's going to be four spaces or three shelves in here. So because we've got 1222, if they're roughly um, 300 spacings in between each shelf, three shelves should be perfect. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and draw the shelves in one, two, one, two, three. Okay, so we've got 25, 25. 25. So now we've got this measurement here from the top of this shelf down to the bottom, which is 1222. We need to figure out all these spacings in between every shelf. So what we do is 1222, which we've got down the calculator already from the last measurement, minus 25, 25, 25, 25, which is 100. So let's minus 100. Then minus 18. 
equals 1104. Okay, so we've got 1104, all these spaces left over equates to 1104. All we need to do is divide it by four. One, two, three, four. Divide that by four equals 276. So there we go, we've got 276, 276, 276, 276. And instead of just drawing that here and wasting time, I'm just going to say same as right hand side over there because I want it to be mirrored. Okay, so we're nearly at the point where we can write a cutting list down from this. But before we do that, we need to do a side profile drawing of the wardrobe. <laughs> Now this is near enough finished this uh, front view drawing. Um, I need to do a side profile drawing so you can understand how the trims work. So side view, remember I'm going to draw the ceiling in, the back wall, the floor, back wall skirting board. Remember there's no coving in here. So ultimately we just need to draw the wardrobe side profile in this space. There we go, leaving our void at the top and the back. There we go, so we've got a rectangle there. I always put a six mil backing on my wardrobes, never anything less, never three mil, always six mil, never skimp on that. I always have backings because ultimately that's what gives the wardrobe strength and turns it into a cube effectively. I hate it when you see skirtings behind, you know, inside a wardrobe and you see the raw wall, it's just not very nice. Having a backing put on is so much better, so don't skimp on that. It ultimately makes your life easier because when it comes to fitting the wardrobe, it's a cube, you need less fixings and it gives it more strength. So yeah, always use a backing. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna leave a 20 mil void between the back wall and the start of the backing. We've got a six mil backing there. And like I said before, we're going for a 600 deep carcass. So from the start of the backing, to the front of the carcass is 600. We're also going to put a door on the front, full size door, floor to ceiling, and you can probably see where my door finishes. It's in line with the top of the carcass and in line with the bottom of the carcass. So I always use an 18 mil door unless I'm making shaker style. If it's flat, it's an 18 mil door I go for. And I always leave a three mil gap in between the door and the carcass. So ultimately what I need to do is leave 21 mil. So let's go ahead and square those lines down. So there we go, we've got 21 mil for the door space. From the back wall to the start of the wardrobe, we've got 20 mil. And then for the actually backing itself is six mil. And then we've got 600 mil carcass depth. Total. We've got 20 plus six, so 20 plus six plus 600 plus 21. So let's add that all up. So we've got 20 and six, 26 plus 600 plus 21 equals. So your wardrobe, if you're sticking to these measurements, will stick to 647 overall. So from the back wall to the front of the door is gonna be 647 total. So another reason I wanted to show you this side profile drawing is so I can show you the backing, the door, and the trims. You can see that the backing and the door, they're both in line with the top and bottom, the top and bottom of the carcass. So that's, that's pretty easy. We sort of know the overall height. We've got 2400, we've got 50 mil gap, and a 50 mil gap top and bottom. And you know from looking at here, we've got an overall make size of two, 300. So you know that door is gonna be two, 300. So we can write make height of this carcass plus door is two, 300. Same with the backing. When it comes to the cutting list, we know that that backing is two, 300. 
Okay, so another reason is the actual trim. So what we do, you can see here, this, this where this arrow is pointing, that is the front of the carcass, isn't it? This is the door, that's the front of the carcass. I always step my trims back on a wardrobe like this, you know, for a contemporary wardrobe. You know, this is, it's, this is a simplified version of a wardrobe. This is how most wardrobes are actually done. If you want an elaborate cornice or plinth detail, then you will not do this detail, you use another method. But this is standard for most joinery wardrobes, you know, most people do it this way. So we've got um, a trim on the top here, flush with the front, and we've got a trim here, flush with the front. And ultimately, this wardrobe will sit on two bearers, one there and one there, which are packed up to the right height. You can see here this, this trim is flush with the front. Ultimately, this side trim is going to be exactly the same. You've got two side trims. As we're looking at it through the wardrobe, the side trim would be around here, wouldn't it? In the same plane as the top and the bottom trim. So that's pretty simple. And all you do is once the wardrobe's in place, you just take your measurements and scribe those pieces in to suit the gap and then fix it through the side. Nice and simple. Okay. so. Now we know that, now we've got this, um, this side profile drawing and we've got a front view drawing, we can now start making the cutting list from these sizes. So let's use this side. Cutting list. All right, let's just start with the doors. Okay, we can start anywhere, but let's just start with the doors for now. Um, so we know the overall height is from this point to this point, two, three hundred. And here it also shows two, three hundred. So we've got doors. We're going to have two here and two here, aren't we? We're not going to have a massive 960 door because this carcass is 960. We need to divide that in two. So I have two doors, two doors, four in total. Four at 2.3 by, how do we work out the widths? All right. So that is another reason why I showed you how these trims worked first. Because these trims are stepped back, it just means that these doors that start and finish at the corners of the carcass, they can be completely flush with the ends. So what we'll do is start our first door in line here. Let's just draw this line down. And the second one in line there. So that is our start and that's our finish of our doors. We're going to have a joint here, aren't we? So that is going to be the center line of the two pairs. So we write CL center line. And in between every door, I mainly leave about three mil, give or take. So we're going to have a three mil gap here. We're going to go one and a half mil that way, one and a half mil that way, and then write three. So we've got a three mil gap here. We're going to have a three mil gap in between here, between this door and this door and a three more gap in between this door and this door. So to work out the widths of these doors now, now we've drawn all of this in, we're going to have no three more gaps here, are we? Because these doors are flush with the end of the wardrobes. These doors are flush with the carcasses. We're going to go make total. So the carcass total, the whole size of this wardrobe is 1920. Take away 369. Okay. 1920 minus 9 equals 911 so this 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 and this remaining space is 911 and we need to divide that by four doors one two three four divide that by four equals 477.75 so all we need to do is round that up to 478 it's a quarter of a mil um, by the time we sand these doors anyway it will bring it back down to what we need so we're going to go door 478, door 478, door 478, door 478. Pretty simple, yeah? So all we need to do is transfer that onto the cutting list, 478. Most doors are going to be 18 mil thick. If you're making shaker, it may change. But ultimately, if you're going for a flat panel door, it's going to be 18 mil, no less. 
otherwise your concealed hinges won't work with anything thinner. Right, so we've got our doors. Let's go for the carcass now. We need to write down the sides, don't we? The uprights. So we're going to write sides. One, two, three, four. Or at. Let's look. So from that point to that point, it's two, three. Again, so these sides run all the way through. So they're going to be two, three hundred. By. So, okay, so how deep do we know? How, how deep this drawing doesn't show it. So let's move on to this one. Carcass depth. Got to write it on there carcass depth we got 600 so simple as that we're going to take that measurement and transfer it over here 600 by 18 because like i said all the carcass components are 18 mil apart from any shelves that span 600 or more then they'll be 25. got our sides on there now tops and bottoms so we've got one two three four t b top and bottom four at right this is the brilliant part about writing the inside size it just saves you working it out right now it's there to look at on the drawing so we've got 924 inside to inside so we've got 924 again this is going to be the same depth as the carcass sides 600 by 18. okay so we've done the sides the tops and bottoms and the doors so next we need to go okay well We've got the backings to do, the trims and the shelves. Let's go ahead and do the shelves. So the shelves gonna be the same length as the tops and bottoms and the same depth. The only thing is the thickness difference because I said, remember they span more than 600. So they're gonna be 25 mil. So let's go F shelves, big shelves. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we've got eight at. 924, same as the tops and bottoms, by 600, by 25. Anything that's got a different thickness, I put a different shape around it. So when I'm making the cut list, I don't accidentally cut that as 18. It's it's showing me, it's, it's in my face, so I, I can't miss it. Uh, I've made it, I've done it so many times where I've cut pieces out of 18 mil when they're meant to be a different thickness. So I've been doing this for a while now and I've not really made a mistake. So we've got our fixed shelves, now we need to do the backings. Pretty simple, the backings, like I said, are the same length as the carcasses. Two, three, backings. One, two, two at, two, three hundred. By how wide? Let's just look at the width of this carcass. 960. By, like I said before, six, and it's also written here. Never any more than less than six, and no need to do it any more than six either. Okay, so we've got everything we need, barring the trims. Trims wise, I always fit my top and bottom trims in first, wall to wall and skirting to skirting. So I'm gonna leave them long, so I'm gonna go trims. Top, bot. I'm gonna go two at 2440, which is a rip of MDF. We've got eight 50 mil height and 50 mil. I'm just gonna go a little bit extra and go, okay, let's go 80 so we can scribe it. And that's gonna be an 18 mil trim. And because these tops and bottom trims run all the way through like this, just means that we can cut these side trims to suit in the workshop. So that's one less thing we do on site. Side trims are two at two, 300. Like I said, they go in between the tops and bottom trims leaving you a, f a trim which is exactly two 300. Two 300 by 80, because we're leaving a bit to scribe on site, by 18 mil. Any trims that are fitted this way, what I would do is I would find fixing points through the edges, wherever your hinges are going, for your doors, that is where you should put a fixing point. So your fixings, your screws are hidden by hinges. And I'd do the same for anything around here. Any, any fixings that you need to fix these carcasses together, try and hide it with a shelf. Um, it's, it's a bit harder when you've got fixed shelves. You can't really do that. You just hide your screw at the back. But adjustable shelves, you can remove the shelf, put your fixing in, and then put your shelf back on top. So there we go, guys. That is how I design wardrobes.
I start from the outside and work my way in and then just cutting bits up and just start working bits up at a time. Every now and then I write something on the cutting list and I have to do a bit more on a drawing and maybe might have to do another drawing. If, for example, I had drawers to go in this space, I would do another drawing for drawers, maybe two, a side profile and a front view. But this one, like I said, was just basic. There's no adjustable shelves, there's no drawers, there's no shaker style doors, there's no fancy trims on this one, it's wall to wall. Um, but I do hope that has helped you. Um, this is the way I've been doing it. If you want it to look nice and neat and tidy, all you need to do is now take your measurements, go onto Google SketchUp, which is a great program, nice and easy to use, and you can just transfer these onto Google SketchUp or CAD to make it look nice and neat. Me personally, I'm happy with this. I've been doing it for 10 years. You know, when you've got these two on the wall, they, they're absolutely clear. It's got every measurement I need on there that I need to work from. Fair enough, the lines are all a little bit wonky, but you know, this drawing is for me. I go through it with Sean as well and any other guys in the workshop, they all understand these drawings too. They're happy, um, but everyone's got their own style, haven't they? And the way they make their drawings. Okay, so I think that's it for this one, guys. Um, hopefully I'll be able to sort of elaborate on these drawings and for example, make the next one might be where it's one open end on, on the wardrobe, not in between two walls, or you've got an extra tall wardrobe. Who knows, I will try and work that out for next week. But other than that, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you guys soon. Ciao for now.